Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Conversations with Coaches podcast. I'm your host, Kevin, and I have already had the great pleasure of getting to meet Russell Harvey. We were chatting for a few minutes, and it became immediately apparent that this was going to be a great guest. Um, he immediately drew from his personal biography to share a story about himself that revealed something about his coaching that was special. And it was like, it was basically just within 90 seconds, I knew this is going to be a great one. So I am excited to get to know him a little bit better. I'm excited to introduce him to you. Let me tell you a little bit about who Russell is. Can sum it up in, well, basically three words. Russell is the resilience coach. He's a dynamic and engaging leadership coach, facilitator, public speaker, managing director, NED, podcaster, radio host. I'm sure he does 17 other things, but that's just the short list. Yes. <laughs> With over 20 years of experience in learning, leadership, and organizational development, Russell, Russell excuse me, has specialized in resilience and VUCA, which is an acronym I'm sure we'll get a chance to talk about, one that's near and dear to my heart, for the past mm. 18 years. So, Russell, it is already a delight to meet you, and Thank I am you. already pre-delighted to get to know you a little bit better. So, thanks for being here. No, absolute pleasure, Kevin. And yes, uh, my brain sort of does connections. So, Les, when you were asking about where you were from and Portland, Oregon, I went... I'm going to teach you from there. And so my brain always fascinates me around what fires off in my head and where things go. So thank you so much for having me on. Looking forward to chatting and seeing where else we go, essentially. Yeah. I, I love the I love the exploration. It's it's part of the it's part of the real the real joy of well, just talking to people. I was it's coaching more specifically, but just coaching is founded on the connection with people, the relationship building, the growth. And it's just it really is. I'll, I'll put on my rose colored glasses, my my I love everything optimism glasses, because, you know, I, the, the enthusiasm is called for here. Human beings are just fascinating the way like understanding more about the way our brains mm -hmm. work, the way other people's brains work, the way we connect with each other and what comes from those connections. It really is just it's an endless delight. So I don't know, I guess I, I guess that's just a celebration and some gratitude for the, what we get to do on a regular basis. I'm just <laughs> completely, completely. And I, I know you haven't ask the question yet but in terms of i'm totally on the same page as you around i've always been fascinated around how why do humans behave in this way or in that way how come that worked how come that didn't work how can we do things like that so I, I think i've always been fascinated in just human behavior and and that i think really instigated my whole journey to being today as the resilience coach um yeah. Yeah. So the, the I think the large part of it is I was very lucky to go traveling around the world in 1996 and 1997 with my lovely wife. And I was teaching in Hong Kong and some magic was happening in the room, but I didn't know what the magic was. Uh, I just went, there's something gorgeous going on here. And I, I, what is it? What's happening? And then to now state the obvious a few years later, it's like, oh, learning. Ah, when people have a light bulb moment and a realization moment, or they go from confused face to aha, or I know how I can apply that. For me, that was just like magic. It was like a boost to like the heart and the gut to go, that's brilliant. I want to do that for a living. But I didn't want to be a teacher in a school. I knew that I just, I'm not teaching material. My wife's a teacher. I'm not. Um, so that's <laughs> when I thought, when we came back from traveling, it's, I think I want to be a trainer. You know, you're looking for a job description at the time to go, mm. I want to do this sort of teaching thing, but not teaching. So a business trainer. But that was my career then, essentially. So that's, you know, your introduction of my whole career in learning, leadership, organizational development, worked mm. in lots of different places. And then eight years ago, when I left, left my last permanent role, uh, that's when the resilience coach was born, because the last permanent role I was doing was in an organization called the Co-op Group, which is brilliant. Lots of great values. And he got himself into a pickle, really serious pickle as a business. And that's when the resilience and the VUCA piece came out. Because I spent mm -hmm. all the time with my uh, people in the co-op and they're going, the world's falling on our heads. What on earth to do? And I go, well, it's this resilience word and this VUCA, an acronym. Our solutions are in there. And when I left and did the navel gazing around, what's my USP? And it's mm -hmm. like, do you know what? <laughs> I am the resilience coach. I've spent the last few years in the co-op talking about nothing else other than resilience and VUCA. So that's my business. That's who I am. I love, I love, I love the way that you chart your path on the map there because there, there are, there are certain, there's certain, there's a uniqueness to it, but there's also, there are certain almost like landmarks that I feel like everybody crosses. And there is just like, looking back at your life, it's almost as if you were training to become the coach you are for your entire professional life. Like you were acquiring Absolutely. these skills and these, uh, this understanding. And as you went along, you were looking for the vocabulary, 
where it's like, you know, there's something Ooh. about something that happened in the process of teaching that I liked, that I loved, that really sparked me. It's not the teaching itself necessarily, but there's some expression of it that resonates yes. with me on such a deep, profound level. And you kept like, you took that awareness, not certainty, but you took that awareness, like there's something else. I'm going to go forward. And you went forward with that. And you kept trying things. You kept looking for ways to grow and develop that awareness and to be of service and to help people and, and acquire more skills. Then you get more words and you find out about, you know, you embrace resilience and VUCA in particular, which I'm sure we'll talk about. And then you yes. get to a point where you just realize, oh, it, coaching, I think, is the way that I can maybe tie all these things together that I now realize I've been gathering my whole life. And now I can put it all together and see what comes next. That's I always find that journey so fascinating. Couldn't agree more. Absolutely. I, I, it's that phrase of I am exactly where I should be right now based mm -hmm. upon life's experiences. And that links to attempting to sort of as much as I can to role model resilience. So one of the dimensions of being resilient is having a purpose. So mm -hmm. that's for me how I describe that is it's like sort of more overarching and bigger than having goals. Goals are underneath the purpose. So mm -hmm. in terms of like the learning thing that I mentioned, people having light bulb moments. So my purpose is by the year 2025, I want to positively affect 100,000 people. And right now I'm up to 41,203-ish, you know? Mm. Um, and so that guides me. That's a guiding light of like, am I doing things as much as I possibly can day to day to deliver my purpose? So it helps with choices about what I do do, I don't do, the clients I work with, the clients I don't work with. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, it's, it's a real guiding light. And, and I totally agree. Yes, I've got lots of different qualifications uh, around learning and development. And that just goes into the depth and the breadth of the toolkit I can mm -hmm. draw upon as we go. And right now, where I've landed in terms of really supporting clients to be able to thrive in a crazy world rather than just cope and survive mm -hmm. that's why i take a, uh, a strengths-based approach what naturally energizes people so there's a psychometric so it's like strengths finder i use one called strength scope it's overseen by the british psychological society and we've got 24 strengths and you find your significant seven of your strengths and you go right you need to be able to harness those access those, utilize those in a variety of different ways. And it's not about the personal development approach of, oh, I need to develop a weakness. You you will need to, yeah. yes. But first, actually do more of the things that you enjoy doing. And so many of my clients are like, that's ridiculous. You want me to go away from here and do more of the things I enjoy doing? And I go, yes. And they go, well, I never knew that was possible. <laughs> <laughs> isn't that so often the case it's it's not so much a matter of people just not wanting to do things that way it's just they're they're either told or indoctrinated or just never encounter the realization that oh no you can do this differently it, I, it's yeah. just such a brilliant flip too because so often you're you're just you're told or taught or really it's insisted upon that you focus on shoring up your weaknesses you know yeah. making sure there's no weakness in your game or whatever it might happen to be and i think you rightly acknowledge while that certainly is an important part of your development personally and professionally, focusing, founding yourself, planting your feet on your strengths is it really it, 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 it's such a subtle flip. And it seems like common sense when you say it out loud, like you say it out loud, you lay it out. It's like, oh, yeah, duh. Of course, that should be the way that it is. But for various reasons, um, VUCA kind of representing a yes. lot of them we don't quite realize that that's even possible to go about things that way, which is where someone like you comes right in. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. And I'm just reminded of um, it's a real example of in me growing up in terms of education and my dad, just to hammer the whole point home for people that are listening. So if anybody that's a parent, I'm not, but just be, be considering how you are having conversations with your children. So, uh, you know, when I've done a set of exams, they were called sort of O-levels. So it's like high school diploma type things. And so, you know, we looked at the scores, the grades that I got, and I've got, you know, um, A's and B's and things in like uh, music, human biology, history and geography. You got, you know, C's, D's, E's, F's, you know, fails in chemistry and physics. And my dad will go, oh, so tell us about human biology, um, who was the Mr. Nichols, the rugby teacher. Oh. Um, that, And I would go, oh. Yeah, I love going to it. I understand it. I get it. It's really interesting. I, I've read some books on it. And it, and I, then my dad would go, oh, tell us about chemistry then. You got an F in. Oh, God. The teacher and I just look at each other with 
pain in front of us because they know and I know that I just don't get it and I don't understand it. And I walk with like heavy feet towards the lesson. So bless my dad, nothing against him. He was going, right, you've nailed human biology. So what we're going to do is we're going to send you to chemistry school for summer camp. Mm -hmm. I'm going, why do you hate me so much? Dad, <laughs> you know, what, what? so <laughs> Just, yes, I needed to know something about chemistry, but I didn't need to go away and do something that I really wasn't energized by and didn't understand at summer school. If you'd sent me to human biology summer school, it would have been brilliant. Thank you. That's great. That's such a, I, I, I love, I love, see, it's it's like you were, you were, you were learning how to be the resilience coach from the very beginning. It's almost like you look back and it's like your, your biography is destiny almost. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, sounds good. But yeah, I know I it really love... does. It really does. Yeah, I love it's I I really love this acknowledgement too because one thing it's one thing to focus on your strengths. It's another to ignore your weaknesses entirely. And that's yeah. where people can fall into the opposite trap. And Absolutely. I really appreciate that that commitment to a, a foundational awareness of what those weaknesses are or where you might be weak as opposed to identifying them as weaknesses you possess, just like areas that you are less strong than where you yeah. are in other areas and just to be aware of where you're at because that allows you to not basically fall into holes in the floor. Like if you have yeah. a just a, like a gaping hole in your skill set or just a gaping hole in your in your mind or in your education or in your heart, something that might, you know, completely undermine everything else you're trying to do. It's important to identify that and sort of like, you know, raise the floor up to a certain level it's where it's like, you know, it's just you're not disqualifyingly terrible at chemistry. You just yeah. it, you know, it's just you're not you're not great at it not going to be great at it, don't really want to be great at it, but you have, you get yourself up to a level where you know enough chemistry to help you maybe know more about biology, which you're excited about, or things like that, where there's like a bit of a synergy there, that just yes. by raising that floor up to like a, you know, a, a useful, non-treacherous level really yes. does enable you to truly embrace those strengths and build those strengths that you're also identifying. Yeah, and it's all about this word energy, though. That's what I use a lot, mm -hmm. Kevin of like so and it's this trying to get think about it, slightly less the strengths and weaknesses it's about what are you naturally energized by and look mm. forward to and what you're not so i am not naturally energized by detail okay mm. out of my own personal strength scope profile detail orientation is my um smallest energizer okay mm. so if you ask me to do lots of detail i'm like oh god this mm. is hard work and difficult i can do it but I'm not naturally energized by it. So it's, it's just to build upon what you've said, it's this word mm -hmm. energy. You know, everybody's listening now. Have you got any clue about what you are and you aren't naturally energized by? I love that. And it, again, a very important distinction where it's, it's and I, I find myself, I slipped right into the whole strengths and weaknesses paradigm where I was just like thinking mm. about using using that language, which it's it's useful and it does kind of get at some of the, some of the heart of what we're working on. But I think that's an important distinction to make that it's about the energy that that comes yes. from these things that's that's the identifier that thing that really does spark the awareness and i think that's that's important to emphasize that i love that well shoot i want to i want to talk a little bit about like your your coaching your you as the resilience coach i want to get a little bit into the nuts and bolts at least in some of it obviously you do a lot and you've already reached the forty one thousand and change um in an impactful way with you know fifty nine thousand plus more to come in the next year and a half it's amazing i know i know i know right now <laughs> but and I like to I like to ask this as kind of a two parter because I feel like it gets sort of at the heart of of what a coach does day to day, week to week, year to year. Who do you coach, and how do you coach them? The who being if there's a particular industry or demographic or location on a corporate ladder or you know personal disposition or culture that you focus on in some way, shape, yeah. or form for those those are the kinds of people you coach. And then the how being well, you, clearly you do virtually every every possible manner of coaching. But do you particularly focus on or have an affinity for the one to one side of coaching, the mm. one to like one to few where it's like smaller or medium sized teams? Do you do any sort of like mastermind kind of coaching where it's like a private group? Uh, do you yeah. do any? Obviously, you do keynotes, public speaking and keynote speaking. You do podcasting and radio. Hosts. So like who do you coach and how do you coach them? Yeah. in as succinct uh, in five minutes or less because <laughs> obviously yeah, we could probably fine. talk for hours on that <laughs> so uh who i coach so the standard answer is if anybody's listening now that's got the job title of head of mm. or director of dot 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 okay so it doesn't mm. matter what industry it is because resilience is about the human condition you know i do yeah. i've worked in the various industries and hopefully it doesn't sounding arrogant but most industries and businesses they turn around and say well our problems are unique 
Um, when you talk about that, then yeah. Yeah, maybe not. <laughs> uh, so uh, hopefully that qualifies, who I guess, you know, head of, director of, you know, operations manager, operations director. Um, it's nicely in the career that I've had, I do have a lot of female clients. Um, it's just that's just come up. There was one of the many pieces of work that um, I did years ago in a supermarket chain here, and um, they had a women in business piece. They had they had a project that was going on, and the HR director, who was also a, a lady, walked out of her office one day and saw me sitting there and went, um, "You've worked in HR, you know things about diversity, don't you, Russell?" I went, "Yeah." She says, they, "We've got this women in business piece. I'd like you to take a look at it." So I did look at her and go. Can I just state the obvious for a second, please? <laughs> can we? Can I just say it? She went, yeah, yeah, no, no, it's fine. It's all right. I think you, you'll be fine. So that was just absolutely fascinating. Of whilst I spent a lot of my career in HR, and quite a lot of the time, uh, there is more of a gender bias towards women within HR, simplistically. Mm-hmm. So I've had a lot of female colleagues. Um, but then I sort of did a bit of a deep dive into the whole women and business piece. And I think from then I've just managed to come across in some subconscious way that a lot of my clients are female. I'm not overt about it. I don't put it on a LinkedIn profile, but I- I'm I'm comfortable, um, I- I'm, you know, working with women. And another thing I do in terms of the radio shows is uh, I've got one about men in menopause. So mm. it's like getting the world to talk more about men and women about the menopause in business and how that works. So Mm. ideal clients, head of, director of, and how I do it, it is to start with, it's to do with the, you know, the strength scope profile, Mm. but it is immediately talking to people around, you know, what they think resilience is, but then also talking about to them, what's the difference between thriving, coping and surviving. So Mm. I want to immediately get people to understand that resilience is not just about hanging on. I'm not of the view of like saying, oh, it's a Fuka world. Change is constant. It's a full on. It's really difficult. It's challenging. You know, just be resilient and suck it up. That That's not where I'm coming from, because that mm. feels like toxic resilience to me. That's mm. no. that's why I always define resilience as springing forward with learning. So in terms of working with my clients, it's like, so day to day, how do you want to move forward to this place that thrive for you? with you know building your resiliency skills we use a resilience wheel it's got seven aspects to it you get your resilience wheel into a good place you'll be resilient but the big part of it is playing to their strengths what energizes them because it builds natural resilience and natural confidence and confidence is one of the dimensions of the resilience wheel that i talk about uh, as well so i hope that answers the question in less than five minutes (laughs) <laughs> it does. Well, it really captures the heart of, of your of your coaching approach because it's, well, again, like so many, unique to you, but like so many coaches, you have that, good coaches have that combination of very specific frameworks. It's like, we're not just here to talk about your problems. This isn't therapy. We're we're discovering, we're, 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 we're shining a light in some darker places. We're giving you a vocabulary to use, acquainting you more, more properly with yourself. Um, and we're also going to run through very specific frameworks. We have a very specific plan that are going to reveal very specific things about not just who you are, but what you do next to become the person you want to be. And that, yes. that not hybrid, but that's, I, I, has to, I hate to use this word because it gets thrown around a lot, but that synergy between, yeah. between the, 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 what I like to sometimes think of as the 30,000 feet head in the clouds and the boots on the ground doing the, doing the work, doing the work in the fields, that combination of both, I feel like is something that makes coaching not to put too fine a point on it, but special, genuinely special and how it can truly, truly help you to break through from wherever you're at to wherever you want to be. No, and one of the things that you said there is why I also talk an awful lot about this word optimism as opposed mm. to positivity. They're, they're intertwined. Mm. So there's a couple of things there. I'll come back to optimism in a second. Yeah. So one of the other ways they'll work with clients is with the VUCA piece, you know, volatile, uncertain, complex, and business, you know, change is constant. It's not about just saying that and leaving the room to go, change is constant, deal with it. It's to go, <laughs> do, do people really understand what that means, change is constant? But then I want to work with people and going, and what are some of the things that are going to stay the same? So what I mean about that is to do with them as a human being. So how do you get it? The things that stay the same for you are your levels of resilience. Are Mm. you working upon your resilience? You're going to stay the same or build 
um, your strengths, your skills, your capabilities, your attitude, your mindset, behaviors. And but that's what stays constant, you know, mm. uh, as a so that you can face into changes happening all of the time. So mm. then the optimism piece that comes into that, um, apologies of people listening, they, they know this. It's remember optimism starts with grounding in reality. So it's not the head in the clouds. OK, mm -hmm. it starts with. So the trick and the art then is you work with a lot of clients to say, God, business, work, life. It's just so many complications. And you go, right. We need to now um, be grounded in reality about what the challenges are and accept them with good grace. Hmm. Now, accepting them with good grace takes a lot of hard work. <laughs> uh <-huh>. There are <laughs> things that. I'm still struggling to accept the good grace these days. It's like, I know they're there, but oh, I'm not quite accepting it. So start <laughs> your optimism, ground in reality, accept the good grace, not to sort of depress yourself or deflate yourself. It's to go, it is what it is. You know, how do you get yourself to that point? And then you look at your strengths, your skills, your capabilities, your experiences, your learning, your resilience, your mindset that you've got and the people around you have got and you go, actually, can I look at all of those strengths, skills, capability, me and others? And can I actually um, utilize them to counterbalance the grounded in reality so that I can feel genuinely hopeful mm -hmm. that I can face, face into the challenges, not pretend hope, real hope to go. Actually, it's an incredibly difficult, challenging situation that I'm in, which I've really understood. But now looking at everything that I've got and my support network has got, and I genuinely believe we can face into them and overcome them. And when you do that, you get feelings of positivity. Mm. So optimism yeah. first. You know, if you look at the dictionary definition of optimism, it says being positive. So they're intertwined. Yes. But, you know, that's that's also how I work with clients. I ask the question of like, how optimistic are you feeling this week? Mm -hmm. And that's, again, that's, that's your, part of your job, part of your role that makes you so powerful and so so impactful for people is that you not only bring you not only bring the vocabulary, but you explore it and you ask ask good questions, not rhetorical questions, not like you know how's your optimism feeling today? Ah, uh, you know, mm. it's actually speak to it because in in speaking to how how they respond to that word and that question will tell you a lot. It'll tell them a lot, and as their answer changes over time, you can see their understanding of not just what optimism is in Merriam-Webster or the Oxford Dictionary, but what optimism means for them and what optimism means in the world, grounded in reality. What does that look like? And how does that move? How does that relate to positivity? How does that relate to the energy I have? How does that relate to my hope? How does that relate to my grace and my ability to execute and perform grace genuinely in the face of the stuff, the life happening all around, <laughs> the VUCA of yeah. it all? Um, yeah, no, that's just... Brilliant. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, you articulated well back to me what um yeah is going around <laughs> in my head. And when you're in that space, that's what I mean by thriving. So when mm -hmm. people are optimistic and they're playing to their energies, so what you know, how I define the thrive piece is like, yes, it could still be really difficult and challenging, but you can genuinely state, but I'm good. Mm -hmm. And that's thriving, you know, coping and surviving is coping and surviving. Yeah, we absolutely have to do it at times. You know, we will have challenges where we feel like we're hanging on. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. But then it's a case of um, how do you then continue to still find a way to head towards the, th the thrive? You know, mm -hmm. if you stay within the coping and surviving for too long, then there's some risks around that. Yeah, my path up the mountain is sometimes going to involve some climbing. And sometimes yeah. I am going to literally be hanging on and sometimes I'm going to be taking a leisurely stroll through some beautiful terrain. That's the journey up the mountain. And it's all the same journey. Some of it's going to be a little harder. Some of it's going to look a lot harder. Some of it's going to make me sweat a lot more than other parts. It's going to be a lot more effortful. Um, but there's still a whole heap of grace to be had in those moments, even when you're clinging to the side of the mountain that you're on. Um, or when you're just sitting around a fire late at night and just in some of the most beautiful metaphorical land you've ever seen or experienced in your entire life it's 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 all the same journey and it's all lovely obviously it's it's a lifetime of work <laughs> to embrace every part of that journey with with grace and hopefulness and 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 optimism i love it <laughs> no it's bro it's bro i've suddenly got two questions either for you or everybody's listening it's like <laughs> what are you most optimistic about your life in the moment at, at this moment in time and what are you least optimistic about? 
that's what I'm curious to how everybody will answer that that's listening, you know? Yeah. And it's, it's tough too, because there are so, there are a number of very large and insistent um, causes or prompts for a lack of optimism or pessimism. Obviously the, you know, climate right now across the world where, you know, some places are cooking, some places are drowning. It's, and it's, it's, you know, our awareness of it is increasing while our solutions aren't necessarily keeping pace or at least the execution of our solutions. And so it's hard, it's hard to not to see around that, but feel around that. Mm -hmm. um, but it's very important. It's hard for that not to take up all the available space. Um, yeah. But there's, there are also reasons for so many reasons for optimism. Like, I, honestly, and this is going to sound like me blowing smoke up your butt, but like this conversation is a, is a very specific cause for optimism for me personally because of what we're able to talk about how quickly we were able to get to stuff that really matters that's really po not positive not just in uh ignoring reality way but positive yes, in I a know. we can do this like this we have ways to go about growing and developing ourselves and growing and developing together and that's going to have positive effects that we can't even see we can't even imagine but we know yes. we're out there but we know yes. we're out there we have that hope. And it's just that this conversation in particular and this podcast in general is that for me personally, because I, I get to have conversations sure. like this that really they spark that optimism. They spark that hope in my heart. And just, yeah, any, anytime I'm feeling low, it picks me up. <laughs> no, it's good. And one of the things that surprised me about, you know, the, the purpose and the numbers, the 40 odd thousand, <laughs> uh, I, initially, as I sort of said it, I was um didn't think about the responses I might get as because one of the mm. one of the four responses was, well, that sounds a bit arrogant, Russell. That was one of the worst responses that I got. <laughs> uh, uh, one response that I did that I didn't initially get or understand was somebody sort of said, add me to the list. And that's just as that was their response. And in the moment when somebody the first time said it, I went, I'm sorry. Oh. He said, no, I've spent some time with you, Russell. Add me to your list of numbers. And I was like, oh. Oh, oh, right, right, lovely, thank you. And then others said, "Well, actually, um, you've shared with me some insights, or I've learned some things from our coaching, and I'm going to go away and utilize those with some people that I know. So you haven't just affected me, Russell; you've affected them." Mm -hmm. And I was like, "Oh, wow! I hadn't thought just things you don't think about, essentially." Um, so yeah, the fact that we have this opportunity to grow and share and others to learn from us. Um, it's brilliant. It's just amazing. It really is. And yeah, I could talk about it all day. I just did the sort of responsible podcast host thing and looked up at the Zoom clock and realized that we've just been chatting for over 30 minutes already. Okay. I want I, I again, like so, just selfishly, like even if I hit stop record, I could keep you all day. But obviously where you're at, it's getting later into the evening. It's still the morning here for me while we're recording. I love I love our tools, the ability to connect across the world in ways. It's just I'll never get over how awesome that is. So first of all, Thank mm. you. You could add, add me to the list. I can, I can. Oh, say that. Thank you very much. Okay. I, you've given me, you've sparked a lot of sparked, re-sparked or illuminated some things that are, that, that are very important to me. And I, I've really, really loved this conversation. I feel like my day is already made and I still have a, a, a whole day to come. So thank you for that. And also before I let you go, where, if people just want to like get to know you, like learn more about you, who you are, what you do, where can they find out more? And if they want to connect, if they want to have a conversation, if they want to start a relationship, if they want to get some of your coaching, where can they best reach out to you to do that, to start that process? It, simplistically, uh, all through the website. So oh. um, www.theresiliencecoach.co.uk. So loads of blogs on there. There's videos on there. Uh I've got my own podcast, so you can access it on there. So that'll they'll hear me talking about all things to do resilience that's on there. And then there's a form that you can contact Russell. So if you've gone on there and going, oh, I like a bit more about this, you just press the button of contact Russell and it sends me an email. And you just sort of say, can we have a chat? That's Perfect. it. Perfect. That's how it works. Go, go to the website and everything. That's the hub. And there's the rest of the spokes on the wheel go out from there. It's perfect. Dang it, Russell. I'm going to say it one more time. Thank you for this conversation today. I am, I am, I am buoyed. I am, I am uplifted by our conversation. You have a, you have a very, you have a very, I'm, 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 I don't mean to reach into the vocabulary bag, but the word that came to my mind when I was trying to describe you was ebullient, which is just, nice. I need to put, 
put the put the books down. Put the put the English <laughs> education down, Kevin. Just just delightful. Delightful is a much. It's a, it's a nickel word. I can I can use I can use a nickel word. I don't need to reach for the half dollar. I'm very happy to be a brilliant. <laughs> uh, yeah, don't worry. That's that's brilliant. I'll take that. And um, I've also genuinely really enjoyed chatting with you as well. You, you've played back to me some of the things that I've said that um, have really helped me as well. So um, there is some reciprocity there in terms of fancy words for today. <laughs> <laughs> oh, perfect. That's mu- music to my ears and to my heart. So thank you. Thank you to the audience for listening. I, I, feel, <laughs> I feel like I've had a, like a private conversation in public, which is the best. I love it. I love that we got to demonstrate what a conversation like this might be like, what some of your, what your coaching might be like, how you approach, you know, engaging with people and sharing the lessons and the things that you know. So to the audience, you, I, I say this often, but you know what to do next. I'll have the link to to Russell's website in the show notes. It's going to be really easy to find. You can find him on LinkedIn, I'm sure. Um, you can. Connect with Russell have a conversation, get to know him, just read his blogs, listen to his podcast. You've gotten a little taste here. You're going to want more. Do yourself the favor. And thank you for being here. Thank you to the audience. Thank you to you one more time, Russell. And we will get a chance to talk to you again very, very soon.